Hey guys, I'm Prash. I'm a first year medical student at Newcastle. I'm from Singapore and in a few months I'll be finishing my first year here. So having taken part in an audit, uh, although I haven't learned a great deal, like I learned a few lessons that I thought would be really helpful. And I think one of them is the fact that not many people do a re-audit. So a re-audit is essentially where once you complete your audit and you find a solution to the problem you were looking at, um, go back to the hospital like after a few months or maybe a year and do the same audit again to see how um, the difference in improvement, like whether there's been any improvement since the last time. And I think that like that closes the loop of like, and, and it's the it serves the entire purpose of doing an audit in the first place. And the fact that you're doing a re-audit at the same hospital, it'll be much easier to get into the hospital, get published. And it's also a lot of times um, it's it's been it's been seen that people who have done a re-audit have a higher chance at publication rather than a simple first-hand audit. Um, yeah, so I just my my advice would be to. Uh, if you if you do an audit that can be re-audited, go back for it one year down, even though you don't think it might be helpful. It means a great deal to the hospital and also help you on your CV and on, on, on like presenting at conferences and getting it published as well. So I think another piece of advice I could give was be really um, organized and meticulous at your audit. So I knew people who went to the uh, to went to the hospital to collect data on a daily basis, and although although that that's perfectly fine to do, like I I didn't want to go to the hospital as often as they did, so. With many, with many cases, you can actually um, access patient records one week before the patients come into the hospital on an elective procedure. So I think it's best to plan out, um, maybe go twice or thrice a week maximum to the hospital, but space it out and really know what you're looking for. And, w and that, with that being said, I think it's really important that you make yourself known to the staff on the ward because many times, like I struggled with this, um, I, I, I didn't really tell anyone on the ward that I was doing an audit and they saw me quite often, but with how often the staff change at hospitals and how many shifts they have, no one knows who you are because it's really busy. But um, sometimes there are a lot of people on, on inclusion lists that you miss out on just because they've not been um, entered on the system. But, but the, the staff at the hospital or the nurses are really helpful in telling you which ones can be on the, um, can be on the uh, inclusion list. So I think it's really important that you make yourself known and hand them a list of the criteria you're looking at and just tell them that if there's anyone who matches the criteria, whether they can let you know in advance so you can come down and um, access their patient records. And, um, and oftentimes you'll also see that many patient records are missing just because of inefficiencies at the hospital. Um, so the way you obviously as a medical student you can't access these patient records once they've been taken away so I think what you should be doing is um, use, uh, calling up the secretary for the consultant who's linked with your project and let them know that you need these patient records and they can access it for you and a lot of times there are a lot of patients files who have been missing who have been the deciding factor between whether your conclusion holds or not and I think that's really important that you get uh, in, especially in an audit that you get every single person on it because it's not unlike a research project it's not really a sample size it's it's actually all the people who have had that surgery or had that procedure in that period that you're looking at um, so if you're doing an audit yourself and rather than through an organization um, or if you're not doing an existing audit and you have your own idea although it's easier if you go for like a really localized or um, something specific to your local hospital or um, yeah the OR the local OR I think it's better to get, like if you want to get published, it's better to go bigger. So if you have a more national or more global outlook, instead of looking at factors that only affect your hospital, start looking at factors that might affect the entire UK or the entire region as a whole. Um, and there's more chance of getting published because when you send an audit in for a, pub a publication, many a times it's rejected just simply because it's not relevant. For example, if I'm looking at something that happens down in Newcastle, uh, I mean rather up in Newcastle, someone in Brighton really wouldn't care what's happening here. So I think if you look at criteria that's more inclusive or let's say that's all around, like that happens within the NHS as a whole, there's a higher chance of getting it published. And that's really important because um, at the end of the day, although an audit or like research can teach you a lot, it doesn't mean anything unless it's published. And if you're applying for foundation jobs or if you're just applying for other posts or other research experience, um, or summer projects, it's really important that you're published so like you, you have some sort of um, um, some sort of base to, to, uh, to, like, to climb on. Thanks guys for watching this video and as usual please like, comment and subscribe and if you have any uh, questions about audits uh, feel free to hit me up on 